Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar session. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about delivering a five-star customer experience. I'm excited to be here. This is put on by the Certified Contractor Network and Broadly. So today, we're going to be talking about how we deliver a five-star customer experience to our customers and also how we capture it. So before we get started, a lot of you on the call today are new to CCN, so I just wanted to do a brief overview and talk a little bit about what is CCN. CCN is an organization that's been around for over 20 years, and we provide and share training and best practices of successful contractors. The things we discuss and cover in our trainings and our work with contractors are sales training. We do a whole sales process. We do blue collar management, which is for the production side of the business. We do business operations, which is very helpful for admin and the bookkeeping staff. We do business planning. Uh, this is where the owners and a lot of times the bookkeepers will come through and do a business plan for the, the company. We work with lead generation. And then we have peer networking. You know, and that's one of the strongest. I and mean, we have so many things we offer, but peer networking is, is basically connecting contractors from all over the country together to share best practices. Before I get into it, I'll introduce myself. I'm Sean Foyer. I'm an executive business coach here at the Certified Contractors Network. I owned and operated Norton's Quality Exteriors in the Salt Lake City, Utah market for over 20 years. We specialize in siding, windows, and roofing. So those of you joining us for the webinar today, I do have experience hands-on in the business. I was a member of CCN for 10 years. I've now worked for them going on four years now, teaching other contractors uh, best practices. I'm uh, familiar with sales, production, and administration, and I'm excited to be here today to talk about some of the things that we have uh, that can help you deliver a five-star experience to your customer. So getting right into it, are you doing what it takes? You know, and that's the question. You know, everybody I think wants to have satisfied customers. We want to have happy customers, but are we doing what it takes to get to that level? Some of the topics we're going to touch on today, the first one is avoiding the big three. And as we get into this, I'll explain what the big three are, but the big three are basically disputes that get in the way of customer satisfaction. We're going to talk about systems, systems, systems. You know, when we're running our business, we can't leave things to the chance. We have to have systems in place to ensure the customer experience. Different and better. This is a premise we talk a lot about at CCN. But in order to deliver that experience to our customers, we have to be different and better every step of the way. And we're going to talk about some ways you can do that. At that point, when we get to the presentation, I'm going to switch the controls over to Laura Nelson, who's joining us with Broadway today. And she's going to talk about how your customers are finding you, why online reviews are important. You know, and after we spend some time talking about creating this five-star customer experience, we need to talk about what's your system to capture that feedback? You know, how are you going to get these satisfied customers to review you and be able to share that with uh, future customers? So for just a minute, I want to ask you, and I want you to think about it from your point of view. As a customer, when you're dealing with with a company, whether it's you know a service, a product, what do you expect? You know, when you're work, working uh, in making a purchase, what do you expect as, as far as good customer experience? You know, I kind of put some things here that I look for when I'm shopping for products. I like prompt. You know, we live in a busy world, and we expect you know with technology today, we want instant gratification. So we want our service to be prompt and timely. I want the person I'm talking to to be knowledgeable. You know, I'm looking at making a purchase I've never made before. I, I want help getting educated, so I'm looking for somebody that's knowledgeable. I want someone that's friendly. You know, people buy from people they like, and so in order to do that, we're looking for somebody that's friendly, positive. You know, attitude goes a long way, and we want to be around people that are positive. You know, when you go into a store, if someone treats you rude, I mean, that's a big turnoff, so you're looking for positivity. A great attitude. You know, as I mentioned, attitude goes a long way. I want someone that's detail-oriented. You know, I'm big on detail, so that's what I'm looking for. A problem solver. You know, things go wrong. What happens if I don't like the product? What happens if there's a problem with the service? I'm looking for somebody that's going to help me solve the problems. And I like someone that's willing to go the extra mile. You know, as I'm talking here, you're probably, you know, you know well, I don't look for that. Or maybe there's some other things that popped into your mind. I wanted you to do this for a minute because that's your point of view. That's what you expect from a customer experience. The important point I'm trying to make here is that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we expect. It matters what our customers expect. And so that's really going to be the shift in the focus that we're going to talk about today is in order to get a good customer experience for our customers, we have to do a really good job of finding out what they're looking for and then delivering that. You know, that all comes back to expectations. 
So we talk about the big three in customer disputes. And CCN has this brochure we put out. It's third-party information that a lot of our members share with their customers. And it's got tips on how to make a successful construction investment. Uh, we've, about, we've identified the four Ps of a construction pro project. There's problems, people, products, and price. And in this brochure, we give questions that the customer can ask not only us, but anybody else they have coming out to look at the project. But there's one section in here, and it talks about the big three. And these are the reasons that customer contractor disputes usually happen. And in my experience in the business and working with lots of contractors across the country, almost every problem we run into on a job that's going to affect our customer's experience come down to one of, the, one of these big three. The first one is communication problems. You know, communication and miscommunication can result in problems all throughout the job, from the sales rep not communicating everything properly in the paperwork to the office, from the office not communicating properly uh, to the customer what's going on. Communication is a, a big one. Unrealized expectations. And this is a huge one. We'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is on that last slide what I was talking about. That customer has expectations. They have things they're looking for in a project. And at the end of it, when they're not satisfied, it's because those expectations were not met. We're going to talk about some things you can do to help make sure that you're helping the customer realize their expectations for the project. And number three, three, the last one in the big three is unforeseen additional costs. When we're dealing in construction, things come up from time to time. And it's how we set this up with the customer that determines the results. You know, are they going to be blindsided by an additional cost and turn it into a bad experience? Or are they going to be prepared for it? So again, talking a little bit more about each point. The first one is communication problems. And again, when we're talking about communication problems, there's multiple areas in a project that communication can fall apart. The first is from the sales rep. You know, the initial meeting with the customer, the paperwork that's put together. Is all the information properly communicated back to the office, back to production for scheduling? You know, there's nothing worse than starting off as a production uh, person going out to a job and right when you get there, find out that you don't have all the information, that the customer was promised things that aren't in your paperwork. That's the first breakdown we see in communication. And we'll talk in just a minute here about some systems you can put in place when we get into the systems portion. The other problem we see in communication is between when the purchase is made and when the product is installed. And we call that kind of the lag time, the downtime. Customer gives us a deposit, we turn it into the office, and now who's communicating with the customer? A lot of times right now I'm talking to contractors that are eight weeks out, 12 weeks out, and these people are waiting a long time for the product. They put a deposit, they need communication. You have to have systems in place to communicate with the customer during this downtime so they know what's going on. Unrealized expectations. You know, this is a huge one. Have you ever had an instance where what you bought versus what you got were completely different? You know, for this slide, I've got an example of a red Ferrari here on one side. You know, that's what I thought I was getting. And this jalopy on the right, that's what I got. I'm going to be unhappy because my expectations weren't met. You know, and a lot of this goes back to talking on the front end, focusing on the customer. You know, what are their expectations for the project? You know, I kind of use a little of analogy here. I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, and Tony Robbins talks a lot about your blueprint versus your reality. You know, you have a blueprint for what your life should be like, and then you have your reality. When those two don't match up, dissatisfaction occurs. You have, you know, two choices, either change your blueprint or change your life. Well, I, I relate this back to the customer. They have a blueprint for what they want their project to look like. And it's up to us to make that the reality. And anytime that doesn't fit, we're going to have a dissatisfied customer. So when we talk about sales process, you know, it's the, it's the sales rep's job to go out there and find out what is this customer looking for? What is their blueprint for this project? What products do they want? What pains do they have? Really digging deep into it and figuring out exactly what they want. A lot of times in this industry, we go out and try and sell what we have. We go out and from the minute we first meet with the customer, we start talking about all the options, features, and benefits that our products have without even finding out if that's what they really want. And so, you know, the CCN sales process that we teach is really the first part of it is a needs assessment. And that goes back to this unrealized expectations. We need to figure out exactly what's driving this purchase, what their expectations are, what their hot buttons are. And we do a lot of this by asking questions. When we're building a rapport, we're asking questions and trying to find out exactly what the customer wants. So, you know, as you're trying to create this five-star experience, this is a huge one. You know, we've got to set the expectation. Right, we've got to work with the customer and find out exactly what they're looking for 
and then we've got to deliver it. The third of the big three is unforeseen additional costs. You know, when we're, we're meeting with a customer, and especially on the front end with a sales rep, sales reps don't like to talk about additional work orders. You know, I'm just trying to get this job sold, and I don't want to talk with the customer about uh, possible add-ons later. Well, the problem with that is you're being out of integrity a little bit because as a sales rep, we can only bid what we can see. And depending on the product you're selling, a lot of times there is a possibility of additional work popping up later once we get siding removed, once we get into the roof. Even on the inside, when we get inside walls, sometimes there's electrical that we didn't see. So there needs to be some communication with the customer of how you handle additional work orders and the probability that it might occur. You know, and, and we found being upfront with this on the sell side makes it a lot easier when production gets out there and actually runs into a problem. And again, you know, we're talking about the big three and, and trying to get the five-star customer satisfaction. You're not going to get a five-star rating if you blindside the customer with a huge change order. They had no idea it was even possible. So we recommend talking on the front end during the sales process about how your company handles additional work quarters. You know, there should be paperwork in place. Employees should be trained on exactly how to do this. So if you focus on these big, uh, big three and working on some of the things we're, we're talking about here, you're going to really raise the bar for your company and really deliver better service to your customer. So setting expectations. You know, the first thing I would recommend to try to overcome the big three is start with a plan. You know, I can't believe talking to contractors all over the nation, very successful contractors that don't have a, a business plan in place. You know, they just go out each year and do the best they can. And when the economy is good, they see pretty good growth, but they're kind of just winging it. And when we're trying to deliver a consistent product to a customer and get these good ratings and these raving fans, as we call them, we have to have a plan in place. So that's the first recommend recommendation I make to all contractors I work with is you gotta have a plan in place. You know, what gets measured gets done. And so you need to really put some work into, you know, strategizing, planning ahead of time, what your sales goals are, what your production goals are, what kind of manpower you're going to need. You know, when we're looking at business planning, what does it do for your company? You know, and there's lots of ways you can do it. You know, inside your company, if you don't have the tools, CCN has some great tools. We actually do a business planning boot camp that we have, you know, over 60 attendees come in and sit through a three and a half day business plan where they plug in the numbers. But what we're working on here, is walking through the various steps involved in putting together a comprehensive business plan for your company. You know, something that you can just work your plan. You have metrics in place, you have measurements that you're gonna keep track of. Creating an understanding of an appreciation for the numbers of your business. You know, a lot of times delivering the good customer experience starts at selling at the right price. If we're underselling our products and services and not charging the right price, it makes it really hard for us to deliver at this high level. And in the business planning, we kind of go through really understanding our numbers and seeing, you know, what really our profitability looks like. And if we want to add new features, new benefits that we're going to be able to offer to our customers, they have to be built into the plan. You know, and part of this, we're creating a culture of running your business uh, by the numbers. Again, what measured, what gets measured gets done. That's really what we're focusing on here. Areas that you work on in a business planning. You know, the first one is the revenue forecast you know, what's do planned growth you know some companies really want to grow some companies just want to maintain their site whatever it is you have to decide but put it down and put it into a plan put together an annual budget and this is where you can put in what you're going to spend on marketing what you're going to spend on you know hiring and recruiting what you're going to spend on training employees you know how many of you on the call have a training budget for 2017 if you want to deliver good service to your customers you have to invest in your employees you have to do some training and this all comes back to the business plan and to putting it in your budget. Determining the correct selling price for your products and services. Again, you know, how do we know what the right price is? We can't. You know, a lot of times I hear contractors that say, well, this, this is the going rate in my area. Well, you can't build your price based on what your competition is doing because your costs are completely different. And especially if you're trying to de deliver a higher level of service to your customers, you have to know your cost and come up with your price based on those exact numbers. That's something that you really need to look at if you're not doing that already. Production planning. You know, it's one thing if we can sell a bunch of work, but how are we going to get it installed? We need to have our manpower and figure out what's our crew capacity. If we hit this higher sales goal in our plan, who are we going to hire and how are we going to go about that? And the fifth one, which is a really important one, we talk about the bus. You know, the employees of your company are on the bus. We want to get the right people on the bus. You know, this has to do with, we talk about A, B, and C employees. You know, A are the good ones, 
B are switchable. Sometimes they can be improved. And the C we need to get rid of. You know, a lot of times we put up with C employees and they really bring everybody else down. And in order to deliver this high level of customer satisfaction and service we're talking about, you have to have the right people on the bus. And sometimes, you know, that's moving some people around and sometimes that's eliminating people. But it's really important and it's part of the business planning process. So once you have your plan in place, what's the next step? What do you do? That's where we get into systems, systems, systems. And again, we don't want to leave it to chance. You know, in CCA, and we teach a lot. Every construction company that we deal with, and it really doesn't matter the product you're selling, whether it's interior modeling, siding, windows, roofing, any really service installed products, you really basically have three legs of the company. You've got your sales leg, your admin leg, and your production leg. And a lot of companies, there's a lot of overlap and there's a lot of confusion. And, and maybe the sales leg is strong, but the admin leg is really short. The idea with system systems is to get each of these three legs separated. So sales does their job, admin does their job, and production does theirs. And then each one of them systemized. So we're having smooth processes throughout each. And if we can do that, we get a really smooth running company. And again, this whole focus is back to doing the right thing for the customer. You know, if we've got systems in place and we've got everything separated like this, we're able to deliver a consistent product to the customer and, and leave them very satisfied with us. I don't know if any of you have ever read the book, The E-Myth. Uh, Michael Gerber's got some different versions. There's one specifically for contractors. It's a great book, and if you want help in putting systems together, I think that's one place you can go is, is this book. He's got some really, really good strategies and ways that you can put, put into systemizing. You know, we look at McDonald's. You know, McDonald's is a franchise, but they have systems for everything they do. You know, when you order a cheeseburger at McDonald's, you're going to get two pickles on it every single time. It's just part of their system. And as contractors, you know, we start out in the business, sometimes out of the sales leg, sometimes out of the production leg. One day we have this business, and we really didn't have a lot of business training, and sometimes we don't know what we're doing. And that's where these systems come in place, because we can't just work in the business every day. You know, if we're working in the business, we're never going to improve it. And in this book, he talks a lot about working on your business, you know, taking time away. Uh, to, to work on the business, to put systems in place. You know, when you're first starting, you're doing everything, and so you can ensure the product you're delivering. It's really hard to let go of that control and trust it to employees without having these systems. You know, how are you going to make sure that they're doing things the way you want them done? It's to put systems in place. You know, looking across the country, as I work with successful companies, what do they have in common? They have systems for running their business. You know, in every leg I just talked about, they have systems in place. They have systems for measuring their daily, monthly, yearly performance in critical areas. You know, you need to figure out, and I can give you some ideas, but there have to be things you're tracking, whether it's sales, looking at a sales number, or production, looking at your production goals, looking at safety, you know, number of days without injury. I mean, you have to have systems for tracking and putting things in place. These successful companies, besides systems, they have a cultural of a culture of continual improvement. You know, they're always looking to improve. They're always looking to be better. And, you know, we get some of these systems in place. Sometimes we need to tweak them. Sometimes we find we've got a bottleneck and we need to make an improvement there. But it's, again, goes back to business planning and then looking at everything and putting systems together. These companies also that we see that are successful and deliver a consistent five-star experience for their customers, they work their plan with fanatical consistency. You know, it's not easy to do this. It's not easy to put in this work, you know, to, to put the plan together, to put these systems in place. But if you focus on it, you can have some amazing results. So, again, trying to give you some good information, some things to think about within, within your business. CCN has a lot of these tools available. This isn't a sales pitch for CCN. Obviously, we'd love to, to share some of the information if you're interested. But I'm going to show you kind of the, the systems we have in place for each leg. So this is the sales leg. We call it the connect the dot, dot sales. And we have a whole system we teach. A couple things I want to look on here. You know, we start with attitude and goals. You know, sales is a mental game. And it starts, 90% of it is with your attitude and how you approach things. But what I want to point out here is from client wants to client needs and our measure call and its pre-approach, everything in here is focused on the customer. It's not focused on trying to sell them what we're, we're trying to sell. It's focused on figuring out what they want. Going back to the big three and talking about unrealized expectations, this is where we really do the work to find out what the customer is looking for, to look for their pain, to look for their specific need, and to see if our company has, has what it takes and has the products to deliver that to them. 
you know, this, this is the system that we teach them we use. And the most important part of it uh, from the front end is doing that needs assessment, really working with the customer and trying to figure out exactly what they want. A lot of companies that I've worked with, you know, sales is good. We have sales. It's once it gets to the office, what do we do there? Well, let's look at that. You know, this is our administration connect the dots. And again, uh, you know, a lot of these aren't going to make sense to you. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on each one, but one of the biggest ones I want to talk about is what we call our admin firewall. You know, firewall is a checklist. And it's something that we recommend when you're putting these systems in place, we have to hold people accountable. If we put a new system in place and we don't do any accountability, they're never going to follow it. It's just going to drop off the map and we're going to say, hey, I thought we had a system for this. So the firewall process, the first one is with the sales rep. They have a firewall or a checklist of things they have to have in a job packet before they turn it into the office. And the person that's accepting that job has to be empowered that they can turn that job back because a bad customer experience starts on the very front end with a, a job that's sold incorrectly or not, not having all the information. So the salesman's got to make sure he's got the deposit, all the paperwork, all the colors selected. You know, each company kind of builds their own firewall, but we want to have all this in place and then it comes into the office for the admin. And they've got a firewall of things that they want to check off the list. And at this point, if the information isn't there and the job isn't correctly put together, it has to be kicked back. And this is where the accountability comes in. If we're trying to deliver a five-star experience, we want to make sure that information on the front end is there so we can deliver. Because once it gets to production, if, if we're missing information here, it's going to continue and it's going to spiral throughout the job. Moving to our third leg, production. Again, you can see in the production connect the dots, the very second one here is the admin firewall. You know, before it gets to production, it has to go through the admin checklist. Then it goes to the production firewall. This is where the production manager has certain things he's checking for. You know, making sure the product that's sold is ethical, that it, that it works. Is it the right type of window? Is it the right type of shingle material? Again, checking it. And at this point, if things aren't up to standard, if there's a problem, this is where it's kicked back to the sales rep to fix. So again, we're trying to put systems in place here to make sure the job is sold correctly and everything is outlined because that's the only way production is going to be able to deliver a good, good product to the customer and get this five-star experience we're talking about. Now going through here, limbo period communications. You know, we talked about one of the big three being communications. From the time the deposit's made until the project is installed, we've got to make sure we're communicating with the customer. This can be a series of phone calls every two to three weeks. It can be emails that go out. Uh, some companies do a combination of both. Uh, the point is you've got to have a system in place. How are you communicating with the customer during these limbo periods? And again, we've got on here in a couple of places additional work orders. An additional work order. That's uh, one of those things that, you know, it's talked about in the sales process. During the pre-construction meeting when the project manager's out there, he may see some areas that they need some additional work done. It can be brought up there. And then once the work is in progress, uh, things are discovered that the salesman couldn't bid, and that's where the additional work order. And again, all this ties back to everything we're talking about, communication with the customer, setting the expectation, finding out their expectations, and then putting a job together to meet it, and having these systems in place every step of the way so that as a job goes from the salesman through admin through production, everything is checked off, and when we get to install it, we deliver a smooth product to the customer. The last one we're going to talk about today as far as creating a five-star experience is being different and better every step of the way. You know, I've got two Jeeps on, on, on this slide here. If we're going to try and get a different price, and we're going to try and do a, a better job. You know, those are both Jeep Rubicons. The top one is all tricked out. You know, it's different. It's got some better things. But again, what's the customer's expectation? There might be some customers that want the Jeep on the bottom. We need to find out on the front end. But in order to do this, we just have to really focus on being different and better every step of the way. Starts with the way the phone is answered on the front end. You know, we, the first part is the sales process. When the job comes into the office, who's answering the phone? Do they have a script they go by to make sure they're getting the right information and delivering a similar experience for every customer? And then once the sales rep gets it, you know, if you've got two or three or five or ten sales reps, are they all doing the same thing when they go out to the customer? Do they have a system in place? Once they sold the job and turn it in, how does that admin process? And again, we're looking for ways to be different and better every step of the way. You know, on the sales process, whenever I was looking at a job and doing a needs assessment, I was always looking to find three things that I could do better and different than my competition. Whether it was the type of flashing we'd use and insulation, something that uh, by, by doing a little bit extra work and a little bit of extra 
thought process on the front end, I could deliver a different product to the customer. It's the way the phone is answered. It's the way everybody's trained. You get to the third one, production. You know, in order to deliver the five-star experience, production has to be trained. They have to have systems in place. You know, I'm going to think about it. What are your installers saying when, when they get to the job? How do they introduce themselves to the customer? If you don't have a system in place and you don't have scripts that they can use, if you have three crews, each, all three of them are doing something completely different. And if we're trying to raise the bar and get, you know, this customer satisfaction, this really high level, this five-star, We've got to have systems in place on, on all of these. So again, kind of, kind of touched on a lot of things here on trying to make a better experience for your customer. At the end of this presentation, my contact info, information will be up there. You can reach out to me if you have specific questions. I'm happy to do a, a free 30-minute coaching call for any non-CCM member if you want to get on and just talk about some of these, these things and get some ideas. The other thing before I pass over to Laura, uh, now that we've talked about creating the five-star experience is We've got an event coming up. Uh, those that registered for this ahead of time, what you probably saw in there, we, we were doing some free offers. I've got a free guest pass, and I worked with Laura Broadley to put this together. We're going to be in Philadelphia September 7th through the 9th. Our conference is on execute and achieve your goals. We're going to have Gary Ryan Blair there. He's a motivational and a goal speaker. I've heard him in the past. He does an excellent job. We're going to have breakout sessions specifically on production, on planning for profit. We're going to have some things on uh, sales reps, you know, specific breakouts for, for sales reps in your company. Uh, if you've never been to a CCN event, you're a non-CCN member, we have this free free guest pass offer. There's the link on the bottom of the screen. When you get there, register as a non-member, and then at the final page, enter broadly guest as a promo code. Or again, my contact information will be up at the end. You can reach out to me directly if you want more information. It's going to be a great event, great way to find out more about CCN and kind of what we do. And for those of you with broadly, they will be there as well. So it's going to be a really good one. Well, I'm I'm done talking here for a minute. I'd like to turn the time over to Laura. Laura, are you there? I am. Let's let's we've talked about the five star experience. Let's have you go ahead and start talking about you know, how people find us and how how they're going to capture these reviews once we get this high level of of customer satisfaction. Sure. Uh, just give me a moment here to switch over to my screen. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see it. Okay, great. Well, thank you for the warm welcome, Sean. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Laura Nelson. I'm the Director of Marketing with Broadly.com. We collaborate with local businesses, including contractors, on their online presence and customer reviews. So every day I get to talk with business owners like yours on the topic of getting five-star feedback. Sean covered the fundamentals of delivering a five-star customer experience while you're on the job. And I'm going to continue on that path to talk about getting your customers to leave you five-star feedback. So many of you may be wondering why five-star reviews are important and how a contractor can do that successfully. Before we talk about how you get that five-star feedback, however, I want to start with how homeowners are searching for and evaluating businesses just like yours. So let's start with your customers first. As a marketer, I like to think of your customer as a modern consumer. So here's an example. I'll call her Elsie. She's your typical modern consumer of 2017. Elsie's married. She owns a home in Jenison, Michigan. She has a couple kids. She works full time as a school teacher. She's involved with the PTA and she has uh, a lot of qualities that might resemble you in many ways. She certainly resembles your average customer. Elsie's well-connected. If she needs an answer to everyday questions, she starts with Google. She's looking for a restaurant, she checks Yelp. If she's booking a vacation, she won't make any reservations with, without going to TripAdvisor. So, the reality today is that the internet is now in our pockets. And we no longer have to be tech savvy to utilize it in our everyday lives. 
connect. Even if you may not consider yourself as the most connected, I assure you that your customers are. So when someone like you, Elsie, or you or I need to solve a problem and find a local business, whether it be a pediatric dentist for our kids, a catering professional, or a roofer to repair a leak, or replace a whole roof, we ask our friends for recommendations, or we may turn to our smartphones or our computers. We are not alone. In fact, most people are starting their search online. 80% of consumers go online and use search engines like Google to find local information. So you may be thinking, okay, how does a contractor ensure that he's showing up in a local search and chosen by local consumers. In a rapidly changing environment, this can be tough. What's more, consumer opinion is driving decision making. So in other words, look at this stat. 88% you know, of people trust online reviews written by other consumers as much as they trust the referral that they get from their actual friends. What you and I are learning about local businesses on Google, on Yelp, on Facebook, that's as important to us as what our friends are saying. Reviews matter. If you're a five-star business, reviews are driving revenue. So how does a contractor compete in that kind of environment? How do you play a proactive role when opinions are crowdsourced by local consumers and seemingly out of your control. It's increasingly important to build an online reputation that matches the quality of the work that you're doing. So you may be wondering, okay, how do I get there? I know I need to become a five-star business. Where do I start? What you need to do is develop a system for capturing that five-star feedback. John alluded to this at the top of the hour. He took you through all of the steps of delivering that five-star experience. So think about what comes next. Do you have a process in place for capturing that five-star feedback? Are you following up? and finding out from your customers how you did. Are you learning if there's any lingering issues that you need to fix? The reality is you won't know either way until you ask. So this needs to be an automatic part of wrapping up a job. I wanna pause for a second, admit this can be scary to do, especially if you haven't done it before. You may feel nervous to try. You might be thinking, hey, what if my customer says something bad? What if I'm putting the idea into the homeowner's head to complain? What if I'm bothering them by asking? I'm here to reassure you today that it doesn't matter. You have to do this anyways. You have to signal to your customers that you care. The good news is, that if you're running an honest business, the majority of your customers are satisfied. If you make it easy enough for them, you're gonna start getting their five-star feedback once you ask for it. So let's talk about a few of the ways that you can follow up with and engage your customers. There's lots of different ways, right? You can ask them in person. Ask them after the job is complete, hey, how did we do for you? You can call them on the phone at a later time once the job is done. Check in, see how they're feeling. You can reach them electronically. Send them an email or a text message. Or you can reach them through the mail. Maybe you've sent postcards or surveys. Lots of different ways to engage. The important thing is that you need to determine what works best for your business. Ask yourself, which one of these methods 
are homeowners most likely to respond to? So there's lots of ways, again, to do this. I wanna talk about one such way broadly does this, just to give you an idea of what this looks like in practice. So what broadly does is makes the act of following up with homeowners and learning about that customer experience simple and easy. The program also enables customers to leave five-star feedback on the platform of their choice. What we are focused on doing is building a contractor's presence on Google, on Facebook, on Yelp, on the contractor's website. These are the pages that have the most consumer traffic and are gonna earn the best opportunity of getting in front of homeowners, those homeowners that are searching for you and evaluating whether to give you a call. So our goal is to ensure that businesses look great on these pages. I wanna show you a little bit about how this works in practice. We start with a simple customer follow-up. So I talked about those four ways or more that you can follow up with a customer to see how you did. You know, our platform works on email. It's a branded communication for your business that asks a simple question. First, of course, it says, thank you. Thank you for your business. But also ask whether you would recommend or whether that customer would recommend your business to a friend. Very simple, not a 10 word or 10 question survey, but a simple, short and sweet communication. This is designed for that customer to interact. Based on that response and based on what that customer is logged into, we're gonna send them a few different directions. So if they hit yes, as is illustrated here, and if they're logged into Gmail, you know, by this example, they're gonna reach your Google listing with one click. It pre-fills five stars, makes it super easy for them to leave feedback directly onto your listing. Very, very, uh, valuable in your presence, you know, in showing up in that local Google search. However, you know, if they're logged into Yelp and not Google, not Facebook, you know, our platform might send that customer to Yelp instead. And the same goes through Facebook. If they're not logged into any of those platforms, our program may send them directly to your website to leave a review. So lots of different ways here that broadly is enabling that customer to leave you great five-star feedback. Let's go back to that original email. You may be wondering, hey, what happens if they're less than satisfied? Do I get an opportunity to understand exactly what they're thinking? And the answer is yes. So if they hit no on that communication, our platform sends them to a private landing page. So what this does is enables you to collect their feedback offline and understand exactly what happened before they go somewhere more public and air their grievances. Now, if you follow the Steps and Sean's program, this is probably not going to happen. However, if there are any oversights along the way, it's just another safety net to ensure that you're understanding their sentiment before they go somewhere more public to leave their feedback. What this does, as soon as that customer leaves their feedback on this private landing page, it generates an email to you, the business owner, in real time. Let's you know right away, as soon as they leave that feedback for your business, that there's a problem. And from this communication, 
and you can engage with that customer. Follow up, see how you can make things right with them. Goal is to, again, you know, be prompt, acknowledge the issue, and make the customer whole. Another element of our program is ensuring that you're sharing great customer feedback on all of the platforms that matter. You know, I mentioned Google, Yelp, Facebook. Your website is an important part of your online presence as well. Our program enables you to stream this great feedback on your website automatically as native content. You get the benefit, the SEO benefit of customer keywords, of maybe good things that are being said about your business elsewhere, also tied together on your website. So if you're not sharing great customer customer testimonials on your website today, that's something I strongly encourage you to consider doing. And the last component of the Broadly program is to understand how you're doing on a week by week basis. You know, this is a sample of the report card that's sent out from our program that gives you a digest of where your customers are talking about you, whether they'd recommend you, and what they said. Directly from this report, you have the ability to share that great feedback onto your public pages, for instance, Facebook, and maximize the benefit of that five-star review. The goal here really is to show up on that local search. I'm going to tie back to that customer example I shared earlier. That modern consumer, Elsie, who's looking for someone to repair a leak or for a replacement. She may start with a search like this, for a roofer in Jenison, Michigan. And when she does that search, you want to be a standout contender for her business. When you do this search, from Elsie's point of view, the choice is clear. You get a lot of choices here, you know, above roofing, reliable roofing, Great Lakes systems. However, and they, and they all look comparable when you look at their ratings, you know, 4.8, 5, 5, all great ratings, but the top choice really stands out. 83 people have taken the time to write their feedback about above roofing. So that alone really shows that you know, they're an exemplary business. So what I'm talking about today really is just putting a process in place and considering a system like Broadly or something else to build that foolproof online reputation. It's not just about getting five-star feedback and looking good, though. You know, five-star feedback is going to help your business grow and help you invest in other areas. So consider this example from Green Flooring Supply, who invested in our program a year and a half ago. An enhanced and improved online presence has enabled them to not only solidify their online reputation, but grow their revenue and invest in the future. These are really powerful proof points. And this is one of our goals. Again, the points that Sean and I are trying to underscore today is you know, the goal here is to become a five-star contractor and stand out from end to end. This means that you can attract the type of customers that you want, you can charge prices for the services, for the jobs that your five-star business commands, and you can establish yourself as the premium choice in your area. So get proactive, become part of that online conversation, and use it to attract your next customer. 
So I hope you found this useful in terms of understanding how five-star experiences and happy customers can enable you to attract new customers. If you'd like to learn more, we can take a look at your pages, you know, jot down my information. I'll share that with you in just a second. You know, it's worth a few minutes of your time to get a free diagnostic of how you're doing today in terms of your customer reviews. I also want to point out uh, some of our offers. Sean shared his offer for the conference. We'll be there as well as he mentioned, so we'd love to meet you there. Uh, we have a couple of additional offers for Broadly. If you decide to enroll with our program, we waive setup. That's a $200 savings from us. And additionally, um, all attendees are registered to win a $250 gift card from Broadly. I want to leave you with this. This is our contact info. Please reach out to me and to Sean if you have any questions about delivering a five-star experience, about getting great customer feedback online. We'd really love to hear with you and uh, learn about what you're thinking and your processes are today and how we can inject our expertise into your systems. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for sharing that great information.